welcome friends. This is Bobby. I'm Frank. And Melinda. And we welcome you to today's program. You watching is a blessing to us. And I believe in my heart this is going to be a blessing today as you watch. It's, a, it's life changing words that we're going to tell you. I, I'm telling you, it really can. You think, Jesus, that I'm stretching the truth? No, I'm telling you the honest truth. And you'll see. You'll see. So just say a prayer as, as we start to share that you will receive what God has for you in these. Um, Melinda, you go ahead and start us okay. off. Okay. We're all going to be participating today in a study called The Word is the Seed. And so uh, we just pray you'll be blessed by this today and that uh, it'll help you in your growth with the Lord. But, you know, everything in life begins with a seed. It all begins with a seed. And the Word is the seed. It actually is the seed. In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word, the Bible, that's God. It says the Word was God. And then in verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The eternal word of God became a human being so that he could save all who would believe on his name. So the world began with a seed. And in John 1.1, 1, 1, uh, Jesus was God's seed. And then in Luke one thirty five, I want you to listen how it all came about. The angel came to Mary and he visited her and the angel answered and he said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and the word, the seed was implanted in Mary's womb. That seed was implanted in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit. Again, verse 14 of John 1.1, 1, 1, the seed, which is the word, became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so now listen to 1 Corinthians 3.9. Now this is Paul speaking. He said, we are only God's co-workers. He says, you are God's garden, not ours. You are God's building, not ours. And then in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul said, my work was to plant the seed in your hearts. And Apollos came along and he watered it. But it was God, not we, who made the garden grow in your heart. So how do we plant this word or seed of God in our hearts? How do we do it? Well, we do it by reading the word of God, which is the seed. We have to receive that seed of the word. We have to accept it. We have to confess it until it gets into our spirit and our heart. Now, you know, a lot of you out there have gardens. A lot of people like to grow gardens or plant flowers. Okay. But there are certain things that it takes to grow a garden. Okay. And for a garden to grow, you're going to have to have a seed. You have to have a seed and you have to take that seed and you got to bury it in the ground. You got to plant it. But listen to this what it takes. There are certain elements that it takes for that seed to grow. It takes sunlight. It takes correct temperature. It takes water. It takes air. It takes a correct environment. You can't just plant a garden anywhere. It's got to have the right place so that the sun can get to it, right? And the rain. 
So there's a lot of conditions and there are also conditions in the word of God. Once we're born again of incorruptible seed, once we say, Jesus, come into my heart. We're a spirit. God's a spirit. We pray. We ask you to come into our heart. We believe, Jesus, that you're the son of God. Immediately when you pray that and you accept God as your savior, that seed of God enters your spirit and you become, your spirit becomes born again by the spirit of the living God. So now the seed of God lives in you. But seeds have to grow. They have to grow. And so that's what we're saying. It takes things, it takes you participating to grow. It takes getting into the word and renewing your mind with the word of God along with some other things. So Frank, you're going to get into uh, speaking to us about some of the word of God that talks about different types of seed. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to jump back. Let me get the picture. <laughs> I want to jump back into Genesis, okay. back in the beginning. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and so it was. And the earth, catch that, the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God said it was good. I wanted to emphasize, of course, the seed's important. Yes. And uh, we're going to dwell on that in this today, but also the ground in which it's planted, as Melinda was pointing out now. There are certain conditions that have to be met. Exactly. Uh, you want good soil. You don't want dry, sandy stuff. You want good, rich earth. And the Lord's using this to, to create a parallel so that you can see how it works within our hearts and within our lives. He's just told the, the uh, preaching to the crowd, he just spoke about the sower went out to sow his seed. And then he goes on to explain to the disciples. He says, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Amen. And then he goes on to say, those by the wayside were those that heard and the devil came and snatched away that word out of their heart. Notice it said out of their heart. Okay, now that gives us a clue as to where this seed is supposed to be planted. Mm -hmm. it, it's your mind's involved, of course, but the seed has to get into the heart. Yes. And there's some things that can hinder that. One is a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. I've had to <laughs> deal with that myself. So he, he snatched the word out of the heart lest they should believe and be saved. The second one was it fell on rocks or rocky soil. They received the word, okay, but it didn't have any root because there wasn't much soil there. It was mostly gravel. So it could go down a little bit but it couldn't go deep enough to remain. And so when the, uh, it says here, no root, and in time, with temptations, they fell away. In other words, the cares of life and things of that nature came, and uh, the, the word couldn't stand up against it because it didn't have a good root. And they which fell among thorns heard the word. They went forth, but they were choked by the cares, the riches, and the pleasures of this world system. That's another thing we have to be cautious about and watch for is that um, we can't let these, this world system that we're living in, remember I've said before, you know, we, we live in a swamp, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and uh, um, we have to be on guard and not let these things try to uh, hinder the growth of that word. But then finally, good ground. Now, all of these uh, three points here come back to one thing, and that's the ground or the, the earth or the soil or the heart in which the seed was planted. 
the seed can't really do anything until it's planted. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying his words, his teachings, everything in this word is like a seed. But if it's just laying here on your desk or on your coffee table and it's never opened and never read, nothing will come out of it. You won't see things growing out of the book. It's got to be planted. And it has to be planted in a heart that's ready and willing to receive it and let it grow. And that's to me, was the important thing there, too, is not only is the seed important, but where it's planted is important. The, back, remember back in Genesis, he said, and the earth brought forth the fruit. Yeah. Once the seed was planted, then the earth, and the parallel here is our heart, is the earth, once it was planted in that good soil, then it could start to grow, and then it could start producing good results in your life. Well, you know, Frank um, and Bobby, the, the thief does come immediately, it says, to steal the word out mm. of your heart. He, he does, yeah. and he's going to come through different ways. Oh, yeah. But what we must realize is the importance of the Word of God. I mean, there are people that have prayed the sinner's prayer, and they've asked Jesus to come into their heart. And they believe in God. But you cannot do that and be a successful Christian and have fruit bear, born in your life for God if you never open this word again. And I mean, even if you're not opening, you're just going to church once a week or twice a week and you're listening to somebody else. Nothing wrong with that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it takes more than that. It says that your eyes need to be on it. It says your ears need to be hearing it. And you do. You need to be looking at it. You need to be meditating on it. You need to be spending time. The Word's got well, to be first wouldn't place. Wouldn't that be equivalent to fertilizing the Word? Yes. Yes, it yeah. would. It's got to be first place in your life. Now, I can tell you this right now. The devil's going to really have more of a fight on his hand if he's trying to come and steal something from you, Bobby, if you're spending time in the Word and you're strong in your spirit man. And, and how do you become strong in your spirit man, Bobby? Because you're eating the Word of God. Exactly. You're eating it. You're absorbing it. You're spending time in it. You're looking at it. You're speaking it out your mouth. You're hearing yourself say it. And you're believing it. You're receiving it. Versus someone who's not. They're not spending any time in the Word. I mean, they come to God when they're in trouble or, you know, this or that, but they're not. you're not putting Him first place in your life. They have a superficial relationship. It's a superficial yeah. relationship. It's just very shallow. And when hard times come, and they right. will come, right. you're not going to be ready. You're not going to be strong. Remember, we've talked about building your house, house on rock rather rock, than sand. Yeah. Rather than sand, storms, we've talked about that in the past. When the storms come, then they will. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. it, it will fall if you've built it on sinking sand. That's right. It's got yeah. to be built on the rock. You know, I never knew this way back how important it was until I did sell out to Jesus. And I got in a good church that taught the Word and they had Bible school and I was, I was just, you know, absorbing it, absorbing it. But... But and I grew, I grew because of that. But but it's something you got to do throughout your whole life. I mean, you can't let you can't be slipping and falling back. It's something just like you eat normal food food every day to nourish your body and to keep you going. This is what's going to keep your spirit yeah, man going. Your spiritual food. This is your spiritual food, and it's important. You can't go without it for months and months and months. Right. And expect to be strong in God and in the power of His mind. You got to be putting on His armor. You got to be a doer of it too. That's very important. Yeah. You've got to be not just a hearer and, and renewing your mind, but you got to be a doer of it for it to, it says, for you to be blessed. Now, like be a doer. Once those words get planted in you, <laughs> then these scriptures have more meaning. Listen, from the produce of His lips, He shall, this is in Proverbs, He shall be filled again a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth yes what's yes. what's coming out of his mouth hopefully it's the good word of god exactly for death and life are in the power of the tongue yes those who love it will eat its fruit 
Again, in Matthew, the Lord said, for out of the abundance of the heart, remember the heart's the soil where you are supposed to be planting the word. Mm -hmm. So from out of that abundance, the mouth will speak. Well, the mouth will be saying things that are in agreement with God's word if it's planted there. Exactly. It's called your confession. Exactly. But I say to you that for every idle word that men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. Have you ever heard somebody say, if anything bad's going to happen, it's going to happen to me? Oh. <laughs> or uh, cold, bad colds is going around. Mm -hmm. Be the first COVID to catch or ride. flu or whatever, you know. And I usually catch everything that comes around, so I guess it's just a matter of time. Oh, my gosh, they're digging a hole for themselves. Don't you speak that way. You hear me? You speak the Word of God. Absolutely. I once told somebody when they were saying anything bad is going to happen, going to, happen to me. And I told them, I said, don't say that. They said, why not? It's true. Well, you know what? I hear people say over and over again, if you listen to it, even on commercials on mm -hmm. TV, mm -hmm. right. they'll say, my arthritis. My they call it my arthritis. Yeah. They yeah. say, my cancer. Like it's it belongs to them. It's mine. Yeah. It's not yours. It's from yeah. the devil. Sickness and disease entered when the fall of man happened, and it's from the devil. It's not from God, and it does not belong to you. But yet Absolutely. I hear people say, it's mine. Well, yeah. it's my arthritis. Well, you know, the That's word the says the that it's yes. God's will for us to prosper and, and be in health. health. Yes. Right. yes. Well, I mean, that's as clear as you can make it. Right. Exactly. We listen, just have to believe Listen it. to the, what Vine says about the seed. Okay. This was interesting. Listen Good. to this. It said, the seed signifies the divine principle of imparted life in the believer. And this, once it is imparted, is unalterable. It remains in the believer. Now the child of God stands eternally related to Christ. The one who goes on doing sin, in other words, lives in sin, has never become a child of God. Mm. He has not the principle of life in Christ in him. You know, it's it's heavy. But uh, God says uh, that those, uh, let, can I read one more? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, this Take is 1 John 3, 9, 10, 10. Listen to this. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. His seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. Now listen to the Living Bible's oh, okay. version. The person who's been born into God's family does not make a practice right. of sinning right. because now God's life is in him. So he can't keep on sinning for this new life has been born into him and controls him. He has been born again. So now we can tell who is a child of God and who belongs to Satan. Whoever is living a life of sin and doesn't love his brother shows that he is not in God's family. For the message to us from the beginning has been that we should love one another. Yes. I want to Amen. interrupt just a minute to say something. Uh, are you born again? I didn't ask you if you think you are. Or maybe you're going around, I hope I am. Well, I go to church every Sunday. No, I said, are you born again? Not talking about the church, sir. Do you have a relationship with yes. Jesus? Have you given him your life? Have you invited him into your life? Melinda's going to, I'm going to ask you to lead the people right now. Okay, prayer. I'm ready. I'm, this is. You know what? This is what it's all about. And you know what? If you're going to a church and they're not even giving altar calls, um, I don't even know what to say because this is what the gospel's about. Okay. Amen. It's about being born again and coming into God's kingdom. So let's pray right now. Just repeat this after me. Say, dear heavenly father, dear heavenly father, dear father I come to you a sinner. 
I come, come to your sin. sin. I'm asking you, Lord, I'm asking to, you, forgive Lord to forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. Forgive me of my trespasses. Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe that you are God's son. That you're God's son. And that you died for me. And that you died for so me. that I could be clean. So that I could be clean and free. And free. Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Take my life. Take my and life. And do something with it. And do something in Jesus with it. Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Brother and sister, if you prayed that prayer, you might say, "Well, it's so simple." It is simple. It is simple. That is what is required to be born again. Now, if you're truly born again, as we've been talking, that seed now has been implanted in your heart. But you've got to get into the Word of God. You're like a baby that's just been born. It's got to have milk. It can't take meat, but you've got to get into the Word and start uh, starting the New Testament and start reading the Word and absorbing it and getting it into your heart and develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? And if you yeah. prayed that prayer, we'd like to send you, to, uh, send you something that will explain the walk with the Lord a little bit. Uh, just get in touch with us. We're P.O. Box 53, Tallahassee, 32302. Yeah, 02. And that same information that will be available at the end of the program, too. Yes, yes. Proverbs oh. 13. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Okay, here we are. It's about words. Mm -hmm. Speaking out what you mm -hmm. believe. Mm -hmm. But the soul of the unfaithful, or the non-Christian, feeds on violence. Mm. But he who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips, like a braggart, shall have destruction. So what I'm saying when I hush. <laughs> uh, there's a scripture that uh, <coughs> just goes off inside of me a lot of times. And as Frank was reading that, it really sounded <clears throat> loud and clear. So I want to share it with you. Okay. God says, by your words, you're justified. And by your words, you're condemned. Yes. So don't condemn yourself. Yes. God that don't want you obvious, doing that. Shouldn't yeah. It? Amen. Amen. Yeah. That should be obvious. Right. Like, do you want life or death? Yeah. Like and then God right. says, choose, choose life. life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Go ahead. Well, I want to uh, speak uh, just briefly about another seed. God talked about the mustard seed okay. and compared that to faith. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 17, 20 through 21, we read him saying, uh, he was saying, you don't have enough faith. He said, I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. It says nothing. So, you know, it just takes a small amount of faith. Well, you know, that's the, the, the seed of the word of God gets in your heart. And then as it gets in your heart and you begin to, uh, meditate on this word and renew your mind with the word, then your faith begins to grow. And as your faith begins to grow, it only takes a small amount, it says, to do great things in God's kingdom. Genuine faith is contagious. It's contagious. And a growing faith allows us to serve God in so many different ways. So, you know, uh, the mustard seed is one of the Smallest, smallest, tiniest yeah. seeds that there yeah, is. The and so, you know, my sister, my, I remember when she was believing for her husband to be uh, uh, healed, you know, because he was on his way out. Yeah, and she day. remembers, I remember she got this necklace and it had a little uh, tube Ball that was hung on it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and it had a little glass. mustard seed yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. And she would hold it and she said, God, I have no, mustard seed faith. Much. I have this much faith. And she, even, she would remind him of that. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, I just don't, I, I have to have great faith. Well, you know what? You're going to have more faith. The more you move with God, the more you absorb his word and you water these seeds that have been planted in your life, you are going to grow and you are going to develop your faith to be greater. But it doesn't take a great amount of faith, he says, just a mustard seed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I mean, well, I think um, another word that we could have run alongside the word faith is, Trust. Yes. How much can you trust God mm -hmm. in these various circumstances and problems and things that you encounter in life? 
Yeah. That would show how much faith you have. How much trust do you have in him? Well, getting in here, getting in this book, in, in communion time with him, fellowshipping with him, uh, your trust level should increase. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay? How faith comes. So faith then comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans ten seventeen. Right, mm -hmm. that's the way it comes. That's the way it comes. And, Go ahead, and, and time with him, spending time with him, you begin to see these things develop. Uh, Bobby and I both, because of the time we've spent with him in, in these particular areas, we have a, a, a strong trust in the blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood. The blood. And um, the 91st Psalm. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the 91st Psalm carry us through storms, literal storms in the atmosphere, in the house that we live in. And we've confessed, we plead the blood over our home and our properties, and uh, we've confessed the 91st Psalm. And we've been through several storms and hurricanes in this area, and never once has there been any damage or loss to our home or our property. Amen. And works. I give it all to God. I, I say, he's done it, he's done it, he's done it. But we've developed a trust yeah. in him, in this yeah. area. Our faith has grown in that area. You know, Frank, Jesus <coughs> is the master of the, of the uh, wind. Um, this morning at 2 o'clock, I woke up and I could not sleep. And so um, I, you know, went to my phone and all of a sudden things started rolling you know, videos and stuff. And all of a sudden I came upon this uh, song and uh, it was the Gaither group. There was a young lady singing it. And the name, of, the title of this song is called Master of the Wind. Listen to this. It says, my boat of life sails on a troubled sea and there's a wind in my sails, but I have a friend who watches over me. Then the breeze turns into a gale. I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. <laughs> Sometimes I soar like an eagle to the sky. Among the peaks my soul can be found. But an unexpected storm may drive me from the heights. It may bring me low, but cannot bring me down. I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Oh, let Jesus calm your storm today. Amen. Oh, that's Amen. good. Mother. It was awesome. It was awesome. That's good. If you'd He's like the a master of your wind. copy of that, we, Melinda always puts her notes at the, uh, on the YouTube channel. On the YouTube yeah. channel. So just go and uh, you can Find get a there. copy of that along with yours. Oh, my goodness. We're about out of time. <laughs> we love you. This is Bobby. Frank. And Melinda. See you next week.